Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Clutch Cards. They have since deleted all their social media. Kind of like how Rudy Chan deleted his MetaZoo videos. They no longer want you to know what they look like. So Clutch Cards, they are the people who have scammed. They were a card shop in Connecticut. They did a lot of pre-orders, exactly like MetaZoo. They collected all that good money, and then they disappeared. So their Instagram has been wiped clean. Their Facebook has been wiped clean. I don't know if they have a YouTube, but that has been wiped clean. And this is the only place you can actually see a record of what they were doing and the cool experiences and the travel and the people they were meeting. So Clutch Cards is the definition of a flexor. They love flexing their wealth. Um, but when it comes time to deliver the promised goods, uh, they did not deliver. You can, the only things that are remaining are bad Google reviews, bad uh, BBB reviews, and so on, and bad Yelp reviews, I believe. So this was a very, very interesting experiment. Uh, I was two dudes, and they lived it up, man. They had a great time until... It came time to deliver your pre-orders. In that case, uh, they just simply ran out of money. I wonder where the money went. A lot of card shops are like this during the pandemic. Owning a card shop is really hard. It's a grind, and I think I can speak for most card shop owners. And your significant other, or you have to have an income coming from somewhere. A lot of guys who are, maybe they're not... You know, maybe they are married, maybe they have kids. Their wives pay for their card shop. I'm not kidding. I can name names. Uh, I can name a ton of names. But I'm not joking about that particular fact. That is, in fact, real. Their women pay for them, for their husbands, to run a non-profitable entity, which is the card shop. The card shops are, for the most part, they don't make very much money. You can probably figure out that, and, and many times you lose money. So flex culture aside, the majority of card shops are very, very, um, it's very, it's not only bad, it's very volatile as well. Maybe you make money, maybe you don't make money, but at the end of the day, you need somebody to support you if that's yourself, as a single male, it probably means you have a second job, maybe even a third job, but it means you have another job. That's clear to me. Uh, if you are a individual who is, you know, maybe you partner with a bunch of other people, but there's got to be money flowing into the business and you're not like traveling to hockey games. You got to be at the money effing store, right? You have to be at the store. You can see nine customer reviews. All of them once and the website is also gone. Everything is gone. It's as if they pretended it never existed, like Mark's Card. Mark's Card's another very famous example of a card shop that stole customers' money. People paid over a million dollars, including some people like Card Collector too. They paid he paid I think over a hundred thousand dollars to get cards graded by Mark's Cards. And they ran out of money because they overpay their family. So Mark's got paid. His brother got paid, his wife got paid, his wife's br his brother's wife got paid, his wife's friend got paid, and his own friend got paid. It doesn't take a genius to figure out where all the money went, guys. It went to salaries. And that is the whole hoax of this thing. They can't pay for pre-orders, but I guarantee you they got a last salary pay paycheck. And I guarantee you it was very large and probably almost the same number as the people who paid, paid the pre-order. So their, their last hurrah was they um, did one piece and other pre-orders, and they had like a, such a really good low price, and a lot of people ordered because they were like, oh, this is a physical store, they have social media, we can trust them, they've been in business for a little bit of time, and then all that money went to their last paycheck, so then they're like, well, we are out of here. That being said, like the, these stores that will survive or these stores that are not flexing on YouTube that are trying to, 
they understand what the game is. The game has always been this way. Now, COVID made the game a lot, you know, every card that you own. The fact that they have this much empty floor space is quite amazing because you can put a lot of things to sell. In, and the fact that their store is this big, this new, you can, you can probably tell all those display cases are brand new. That's not how you run a game store. You buy everything used and you hope it, and then eventually you replace it new. You don't buy it new to begin with. You don't have the capital. I think this is what happened. They were undercapitalized. They might have taken a massive loan and the loan was called upon and they didn't have the money. This is a very common thing. This isn't something that is like crazy to say, right? This is something that quite that happens all the time. So clutch cards, uh, they went out of business, but this is a very good le learning lesson. Uh, I think there's a lot of lessons to learn. Uh, the main lesson is if you run a business for the first few years, you're not traveling, meeting Gary V, hanging out with Golden, right? You're like grinding. I mean grinding, you're putting 60, 80, 100 hours into your business and you're as sure as hell not, you know, going to F1 races or open cards. You don't have time for that. You got to... Make sure that this business is operational and this business can make money. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how this, like, I honestly can tell you right now, pre-hype, uh, it's very difficult for cards to, it's very difficult for card shops to make money. I don't really know how Jeff Wilson does it, but I wouldn't even worry about a bigger, the bigger the card shop, the more rent, the more employees, the more expenses. I would very worry. I used, I made a video and it was like five Houston stores. You can check. That video went very poorly in Houston. I got some feedback on it. And they did not like me talking about their stores going bankrupt. And But at the same time, that, that's they went bankrupt. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, that they were doing well and things were going good? No, I mean, the store went bankrupt, for God's sake. I mean, it was terrible. And when stores are going bankrupt, they make tough decisions. And the tough decision was made here that the people, the customers would suffer. I mean, it's always, you know, the customers, right? It's always the customers that have to take the beat down. The customers got to suffer and they got to lose money. And I think you look at all that empty space and it does not look like any real game store. It looks like a place for two people to get money and bezel the money, give themselves some highs. It's exactly Mark's card. Mark's card paid himself and his family over a million dollars of customer money. Like... Friends and family got the money. I mean, you look at this store and you look how big it is. It does not make sense for a store to be this big. And then you not to you utilize the store, have more desks, have more tournaments. Look out like you got what four four desk like for for eight people can do a tournament. I don't get it. Um, look how new the bookshelves are. And stuff. that's really expensive. So their expenses are very high, their employees are, and, and the people who suffer are the customers because they get effed in the end of the day when they need one last paycheck and uh, we need to do one last, you know, buy. The customers, they're the ones that lose out on their pre-order money where they could have pre-ordered with somebody more responsible or loyal or something like that, right? This is very disappointing. Um, I do think that in terms of what happened here is it's happening in a lot more card shops than this. It will continue to happen as people find cards and cards less interesting as a general public. But anyway, that is it. <laughs> Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below.